today we will discuss about the outcrops and its measurement. <clears throat> in structural geology, whatever observations we perform in the field depends upon the outcrops. If we don't have the outcrops in the field, we will not be able to measure or understand the various structural features of the earth crust. So outcrop is quite important. An outcrop or a rocky outcrop is a visible exposure of bedrock or ancient superficial deposit on the surface of the earth. So what actually outcrop is? It is the exposure of the bedrock or the ancient superficial deposits on the surface of the earth. Sometimes the, the rock which is beneath the earth surface is exposed on the surface at some locations, maybe because of weathering and erosion or the removal of the overburden. Or sometimes when a deposit is being done or has been done on the earth surface itself, in that case too, that, out, that exposure can be called as an outcrop. So actually outcrop is nothing but the manifestation of the rock strata which is beneath the earth surface and on the basis of which you can study, you can mark or you can measure the different structural features of the earth crust or, or the earth features. As you know that when you go to field you will see that majority of the majority of the area or the say for example the uh, surface is covered by the soil. So if the uh, surface is covered by the soil, you will not be able to measure different kind of structural features if there are any. For their measurement, they should be exposed on the surface so that you can go and you can measure it by, by your instrument. If sometimes when we don't have such kind of outcrops, we use drill methods. We put, uh, we perform drilling and on the basis of the drilling, we develop the structural picture of that area. But in a preliminary uh, study, we need the preliminary study, we need an outcrop. So the measurement of the outcrop has been done by strike, deep, rake, and plunge. In another picture, you can see that there is there are bedding plates. Bedding planes are the characteristic of the sedimentary rock. Wherever the sedimentary rocks are there, the bedding planes are much common in those areas. Sedimentary beds are quite relevant in the structural geology because sedimentary bed can be measured with a wide precision because they have a very striking, or we can say they have a very relevant strike and deep or the different aspects of measurements as comparative to the other outcrops. So that's why bedding is much important in the structural geology because it can be measured much accurately when compared to the other kind of igneous or metamorphic outcrops. <clears throat> so what the what is the instrument we use for the measurement of these outcrops? The most basic instrument we use in the field is clinometer compost. Clinometer com compost is the uh, instrument, a uh, very handy instrument which can be used for the measurement of the different aspects like strike and D. And even you can also measure your uh, direction bearings with the help of the calorimeter compost. You can locate your position on the topo sheet. So calorimeter compost is just like a mandatory requirement when you go to field. Without calorimeter compost, you will not be able to measure the different kind of uh, structural features and ultimately your field visit may go into when. So calorimeter compost will help you to uh, identify the direction. Calorimeter compost will help you to uh, identify your position in the field with the help of topo sheet, of course. Calorimeter compost will help you to measure the deep of the bed, strike of the bed and every kind of aspect what you want to measure in the field and what is what are your objectives. So this is the instrument you must have in your pocket when you are in the field. 
in the last uh, session, we have seen that uh, how the gravimeter compass can be used in the field. Strike. So these are some basic measurements of the outcrops. What one must, or geologist must know. Strike is the direction of the line formed by the intersection of a fault bed or other planar feature on a horizontal plane. So first you have, you should understand that what the strike is. Strike is the uh, line formed by the intersection. See, there has to be an intersection between the two things. So what are those two things? The first is the fault, bed, or any other planar feature, okay, which are usually uh, observed on the, on the earth crust. When that planar feature intersects with the horizontal surface, then the line developed is classified as strike. You can see in the picture that the strike is the elongated line developed because of the intersection of the yellow bed to the horizontal plane. So strike is a very important aspect in the geology and wherever you go to field, you must be able to identify the strike. So if you are not able to identify the strike in the field in your primary observation, the other aspects are like that you, when you will walk along the strike of the bed, you will get this similar bed. So if you walk in any direction and if you are continuously getting the uh, same bed or a same uh, rock, in that case, you can say that you are walking on the strike line. So on strike line, bed won't vary. Bed continues for a longer distance. In that case, that line can be considered as a strike line. And with the help of clinometer compost, you can measure the direction of the strike line. The second most important thing is the deep. Deep is the angle at which a planar feature is inclined to the horizontal plane. It is measured in a vertical plane perpendicular to the strike of the feature. So strike was the line of intersection of the planar feature or bed with the horizontal surface. Deep is the angle made by the planar feature with the horizontal surface. So if the planar feature is intersecting with the horizontal surface, of course, it will create an angle and that angle can be classified as the deep. So there are basically two types or two components of deep. First is the deep angle and another is the deep direction. What the deep di uh, angle is, it is the angle made by the planar feature with respect to the horizontal surface. In the figure, you can see that. Whereas deep direction is the direction along which your planar feature is inclining. So the deep can be classified or the subdivided into two components, deep angle and deep direction. The deep angle and deep direction both can be measured by the clinometer compost. And deep angle and deep direction are very important. When you go to field, you must be able to identify them or you must be able to measure them. The one thing one must remember that this Deep is always perpendicular to the strike, specifically when the deep is a true deep. True deep is the deep or the inclination of the bed, which is always perpendicular to the strike line of the bed. But if you are measuring the deep apart from or uh, away from the perpendicularity, in that case, that deep is called as an apparent deep. Means if the deep direction is perpendicular to the direction of the strike, then in that case, that angle is the true deep angle. Whereas if the deep direction is not perpendicular to the strike line, we keep it not perpendicular. And then if we measure the angle, which is not perpendicular to the strike of the bed, then in that case, that deep angle is called as the apparent deep. Okay, so if there is a perpendicularity, there is a, it is a true deep, where if it is not perpendicular, then it is an apparent deep. So these are the further classifications of deep. Plunge. <clears throat> Plunge is the vertical angle between the horizontal plane and the axis or the line of maximum elongation of the feature. See, this is very important to understand. Plunge is the vertical angle between the horizontal plane 
and the axis or the line of maximum elongation of the feature. So see, sometimes what happens, especially in the case of fold, the fold has a fold axis and that fold axis sometimes have, a, have an inclination. Remember that the fold is an elongated feature. So when the angle is measured, specifically a vertical angle is measured between the horizontal plane and the elongated axis of any feature, say example, fold. So for example, fold, then that case, that angle will be called as a plunge. So there is a fundamental difference between the deep and the plunge. Deep is the angle between the horizontal plane and the inclined plane. But here, the angle is between the horizontal plane and the axis or the line of maximum elongation of the feature. So there is a phenomenal difference in them. Do not get confused between plunge and <clears throat> there was a technical issue. So you should not get confused between the plunge and the deep. Rake. Rake or pitch is formally defined as an angle between a line and the strike line of the plane in which it is found and is measured on the plane. See, what the rake is, rake is the angle made by, by or between a line or a feature. Say, for example, if you have a striation on your uh, fault plane, so it is the angle between the striation and the strike line of that fault plane, okay? And it is measured on the plane. So in that case, that angle will be called as the pitch or rake. So the deep, the plunge, and the rake are entirely different. Both, all three are angles, but they are all different because they are measured in a different perspective. So you should not get confused between the deep plunge and rake, okay? So thank you very much for your attention. I would like to revise the topic what I have just taught you. Today's session was on outcrops and its measurement, where we are, will see what is outcrop, deep strike, plunge, and break. We have seen that an outcrop uh, is a rocky visible exposure of the bedrock or an ancient superficial deposit on the surface of the earth. And on the basis of them, you can measure different structural features on the earth. Without them, it is not possible to measure the structural features. In that case, you need to drill the earth surface for knowing the various structural aspects of that area. Parameter Compose is a very handy instrument that must be used in the field for the measurement of the different aspects or the parameters of the outcrop. The four parameters are being observed, which are of very basic nature. The first is strike, which is the line of intersection of the or is a, sorry, uh, uh, inclined bed with the with respect to the horizontal bed. It is a very common feature uh, in the uh, field where you can see that along the strike line, you will get the similar bed, whereas across the strike line, you will get the variations in the bed. The deep is there. Deep is the angle in which a planar feature is inclined to the horizontal plane. Okay, it is the angle between them. And if the angle is measured in the perpendicular direction, in, then in that case, it can be called as a true deep. Whereas if it is not measured in the perpendicular direction, then it is called as apparent deep. The, the deep can be further classified into two sub constituents. The first is the deep angle and another is the deep direction. So you have to measure the both. Plunge. Plunge is the vertical angle between the horizontal plane and the axis or the line of maximum elongation of any feature. We have taken an example of fold. The axis of fold is an elongated feature, is an elongated uh, aspect of the feature. And in that case, the angle between the horizontal plane and the axis of the fold can be classified as the plunge. It is not uh, similar as deep. It is different from the deep. You should not be confused. The rake. Rake or pitch is uh, formally defined as the angle between a line or a feature and the strike line of the plane in which it is, it is found and is measured on the plane. So this was all about the outcrops and the various measurements we perform with the 
outcrops. These are very fundamental and basic type of measurements that one must know when one visits the field. So thank you very much for your patience listening. Thank you. I will put my uh, Google form link for remedial coaching. If you find any query, if you find any doubt regarding this class or the classes what we have uh, took earlier, you can put it through that Google form link and I'll definitely I will uh, I will see to them and I will answer it. Okay. Thank you very much for your patience listening.